The way that people in Switzerland vote is very revealing. For many years, experts and the public alike saw a split along linguistic and cultural lines, the so-called Röstigraben, using the name of a Swiss-German potato dish to describe the divide between the French-speaking and the German-speaking parts of the country. It would be wrong to say the Rösti Graben no longer exists. In the vote on maternity pay, for example, we suddenly saw a Rösti Graben again. So I think this split still does exist. But I think we can say that especially in the German-speaking part of the country, it has been overridden by an urban-rural split, which is becoming more pronounced. This divide between town and country was particularly obvious in the 2005 referendum on adhering to the Schengen-Dublin Agreement on police and asylum issues. Urban areas with many business and economic interests voted in favor. Rural, more conservative cantons voted against. The urban-rural split was also clear in the 2002 referendum results on Switzerland joining the United Nations. But then, so was the Röstigraben. And due to the double majority rule required for this type of vote, the mandatory referendum, it was a close call. The double majority rule means it must be approved by a majority of the people and a majority of cantons. Twelve cantons said yes and eleven said no. As Schengen-Dublin was an optional referendum, only a simple majority of voters was needed. In the run-up to all votes, the government lets known its position on the topic and issues a booklet recommending people how to vote and why. But the people don't always do as the government says. And so at times, the unexpected or controversial result of a popular initiative catapults Switzerland into the headlines abroad, such as the initiative to deport foreign criminals, backed by 53% of voters in late 2010, despite the government's call for them not to. A tricky one, given that carrying out automatic immediate deportations would be at odds with EU law. This popular initiative raised an important question. What can the Swiss government do if its people vote on issues that are incompatible with international law? We don't yet have the answers to these questions. It is an issue which is under discussion in the government.